This is the weekend edition of the Daily Gold Podcast, covering precious metals and global capital markets for intelligent investors. Now, here is your host, Jordan Roy Byrne. Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to the Daily Gold Podcast. It's been a while since we've done interviews, so today I'm bringing back one of my favorite guests, Tiho Burkhan. He is a fund manager based in Hong Kong, and he's also author of the blog Short Side of Long. You can find that at the shortsideoflong.com. Tiho, thanks for coming on today. How are you? I'm very well. Absolute pleasure to be on your show every time, Jordan. Oh, well, uh, it's great to have you. First, Tiho, let's talk about precious metals. You've been expecting a breakdown, a technical breakdown, before the end of the bear market. And, I mean, judging from the charts, it looks like it's possible we could see this breakdown in the next couple days or couple weeks. If this plays out in the near term as we expect, then let's turn our focus down the road then what might you be looking for to tell you that the metals are close to a bottom or very close to the end of the bear market? Or in other words, what will you look for to tell you that the near-term risk-reward is favorable for longs rather than shorts? Well, I guess we have to compare this bear market to the previous uh bear markets throughout history, but especially the ones that have had a tremendous run-up uh, leading into a correction like we are seeing today. And the two that I'm talking about is the meaningful rally into 1974 and, and a, a very, very strong rally that turned into a bubble in 1979 into 1980. Uh, both of those bear markets corrected by almost 50% uh, in the, in the in mid-70s and by two-thirds in the early 1980s into 1982 low. So as you know yourself, gold's had a tremendous rally from the lows in 2001, um, and it's been up for 12 years in a row before it peaked out on 6th of September 2011 at above $900 an ounce. So currently, despite the fact that this bear market's ongoing for a while, uh, we still haven't had a capitulation, as you said, and we haven't corrected uh, anywhere as much as the 1980 uh, correction, or for that matter, we haven't come close yet to the 1975-76 correction. So the, the possible breakdown that you discussed just recently is, uh, is definitely in the cards leading into the uh, end of the year, and if gold gets extremely oversold by capitulating, uh, sharply into a low around a thousand dollar level, let's say, or a nine hundred dollar level. I mean, you can pick the number. I'm not one hundred percent sure how it's going to go. Uh, at that point in time, it would be a buy. But the other case scenario is that if gold just trickles down slowly and doesn't become extremely oversold and it doesn't liquidate into a panic, panic low. Um, the other case scenario is that the U.S. dollar will probably keep rallying uh, above the one hundred on the U.S. dollar index, and at that point in time, gold could be uh, hurting for a little while to go. Uh, so in my opinion, the bottom is coming, and gold will most likely break to new lows, uh, the way the tape is telling us right now. But it will be difficult to know whether the next sell-off is going to be the real low uh, or not. Uh, we have to look at the characteristics of the sell-off when it does happen. Okay. Now, turning, uh, turning to the big picture, you know, I know we're talking about this before and kind of the term secular bull, secular bear, that gets thrown around uh, too often. But t to play devil's advocate, you know, a skeptic might say the metals have gone down, they've corrected too far and for too long for gold and silver to still be in a secular bull market. They could also say, well, the metals only went up for 10 years last time around and this time it was 10 years, if you consider 2001 to 2011. So how would you respond to these types of views, I guess, in the context of the uh, long-term outlook, I mean, over the next three to five years for the metals? 
Well, the large base that Gold built uh, between 1982 uh, lows and the 2001 lows, between $250 to $300 an ounce, lasted for two decades. Uh, afterwards, Gold had a tremendous move from $250 an ounce in 2011, 2001, my apologies, and it rallied very sharply for 10 years into 2011, as you mentioned. And it had managed to accumulate 12 annual gains in a row, as we discussed. Now, the people that are worried about whether the secular bull or the bear market uh, uh, is now here or the secular bull market is finished are the ones that bought gold uh, at $1,500, $1,600, $1,700 dollars an ounce, and currently they're underwater. And they bought it with leverage, so they're either feeling losses or they're tremendously worried. Because if, if people bought at the lows or near the lows, even if we purchased at $300 an ounce, uh, gold is still up almost uh, four times uh, at the current price level since those lows. So gold has done tremendously well uh, over the last uh, decade and a half, despite the fact that it's recently corrected by over 35%. Uh, as a matter of fact, gold has outperformed gold miners and silver and the CRB index itself. Um, so, in my opinion, the, the gold's primary bull market, the secular bull market, if you will, is not finished. And after this correction goes through its phase, uh, the most likely case scenario is the gold will turn around and rally tremendously and probably turn into a bubble. You have to remember that the last rally uh, the gold experienced in the 1970s was huge. And something similar could repeat once again, uh, as many analysts have predicted, but their timing has been off. So uh, first, we have to let gold correct, find a sound bottom. When the majority of people do give up, that's when we should be purchasing because gold can have a tremendous upside from here. Now, turning to the stocks, the gold miners, as you know, this has been the second worst bear market ever. And at the November 2014 lows, gold stocks, as far as various valuation measures, we're trading at multi-decade type lows. For example, price to cash flow for senior miners was the lowest since 1975, and I was unable to access any data prior to that period. So, I mean, given these types of things, what does this tell you, if anything, about the future for gold stocks and what maybe speculators and investors can expect in the years to come? Well, personally, I believe that the gold mining stocks offer great value at the current level, and they offer great value in, in early 2014 as well as 2013. Post the crash during uh, 2013 into the lows, gold miners already became extremely cheap. Now, when you become extremely cheap, it doesn't mean you can't get any cheaper and that markets don't stay uh, irrational for a long period of time. It can continue to get cheaper still. Uh, for example, the, uh, there are many uh, periods where I could discuss the gold bear markets where something climaxed into a, some type of a looking bottom and still went down into a low, low, creating a major divergence before it rallied. Uh, one of the great gold mining bear markets was from 1996 into 2001, but it looked like it was close to a bottom in 1998. Uh, but we still made a low, low into a final capitulation panic. So this is something similar that's happening right now. Valuations definitely show that gold miners are, were a great buy in 2013. They're a great buy in 2014. And they'll probably be a great buy into the late 2015, early 2016, if we make a lower low, too. Um, all of the people who buy, in my opinion, without leverage and for the long-term investment, whether they buy the GDX at uh, $20 or $22, or at uh, current lows, which we're sitting at, which is around $18 or $17 or later on $15 even, uh, all of those positions will turn profitable, in my opinion, when gold turns around. Uh, the problem with valuation measures for gold mining sector is that what's more important is what gold does to gold mining stocks. Uh, because price to cash flow and price to sales and price to book value uh, I understand those metrics quite well, and I use them myself. But if gold turns down lower and it trades at $900 an ounce, a lot more miners become unprofitable. At that point in time, 
that balance sheets get under stress and those valuation metrics could change rapidly. So it's important to track gold primarily. And when gold comes into a capitulation low and a sound bottom from which you can rally, we will also know that gold miners are probably already bottomed ahead of gold uh, or just about to bottom as well. Okay, now just uh, let me follow up on that. I know that you've traded GDXJ in the past, and in recent weeks, it's held up pretty well. I mean, it's still about 15% away from its low, whereas if you look at the Huey, GDX, even gold and silver, I mean, those things are only, it looks like only a few percent away from making a new low. Uh, so I, I I know that in the near term, you, you probably expect uh, the miners and the metals to decline, uh, but is this recent relative strength in GDXJ giving us any clues? Do you have any thoughts about this, or is it just too er- too early to draw conclusions from that? And, and do we need to wait for gold to break down to to try and draw a conclusion from it? Well, the interesting price pattern in the GDXJ uh, over the last several weeks um, has been kind of like a sideways movement with the Bollinger Bands compressing and the volatility very narrow for an extremely volatile uh, index, uh, which can move up and down uh, very easily on a weekly basis by 10%. Um, so the same is true with the gold vo- gold's volatility and the Bollinger Bands as well and the narrowing range where gold's gone uh, and been kind of compressing in a narrower and narrower range since 2013. Uh, so a big move is definitely coming, and I think most likely we will have a breakdown at some point in the near future uh, because the tape doesn't look too optimistic. But having said that, the GDXJ is one asset class that I definitely want to purchase uh, as it goes down lower because it's if it does make a lower low, it will be down about 90% from its all-time highs. And when something declines by 90%, um, it's a good entry point, in my opinion, and it, and, uh, it offers tremendous, tremendous value. So um, I wouldn't really worry about the recent out, out performance or underperformance in that sense. I would look at gold and primarily focus my attention on gold. And when gold and silver do go move down lower, if that does happen and GDX comes under pressure, I would look at it as a buying opportunity. But uh, not in a sense where you buy it with a tight stop loss. Uh, with extremely high leverage uh, because the index is very volatile. Uh, if you have an allocation strategy of 100% for this um, uh, index, I would buy it in in periods where you add 10% here and 10% there and 5% there, and you slowly uh, continue to buy when on weakness whenever the index underperforms uh, because I think that it has tremendous upside when gold does bottom and returns back towards fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred, nineteen hundred dollar levels, and that will happen uh, sometimes in the next several years. Tio, now uh, before we, before we close this interview, um, you know we we're only talking about precious metals, but uh, any other markets that you have a thought on that. Um, something you want to leave our listeners? Yes, I mean, um, uh, there's quite a few other things that are happening away pr- from precious metals. First of all, in recent weeks, um, we've had agricultural uh, commodities uh, attempting to form some type of a base, uh, and the speculators in this market are holding extreme net short positions on a historical basis relative to how what they usually do. Um, So there's an opportunity in agricultural commodities uh, for a rebound, uh, if not for something more. Uh, Also, in my opinion, uh, emerging markets index uh, is narrowing in a very tight range, similar to gold and silver uh, and the GDXJ that we just discussed before, uh, except uh, the triangle coil information in the emerging markets index has not been happening for several weeks, but actually for several years. Uh, and the movement out of this index uh, is definitely going to be very powerful in either direction uh, as the volatility has narrowed and um, 
Finally, I would like to discuss the US dollar, which I believe has been building a base since 2006 seven into the final capitulation of 2008 and since then has been ranging and uh, finally broke out in June of 2014 on the upside. We have a psychological resistance at about 100 on the US dollar index but after you have a long basing period such as the one that we've experienced uh, in the last six seven years uh, a move that only lasts for 12 months uh, and finishes will be very unusual. So I believe that the psychological barrier 100 will be broken by the U.S. dollar index uh, whenever this correction, current correction finishes. And at that point in time, uh, a lot of assets, including maybe emerging markets I've discussed here, uh, as well as gold, uh, could come under pressure if that was to happen. So keep your close eye on the U.S. dollar. Um, agriculture is a potential play on a, for a rebound. Uh, and uh, as well discussed emerging markets uh, coiling pattern that's been happening over the last five, six years, which is a, a very interesting development for those that uh, are willing to take a trade on either direction when the price breaks. All right. Well, thanks for giving us that. And uh, before we close here, why don't you mention um, – your free newsletter and how at some point you're going to turn this into a, a paid newsletter. Well, I've been running my blog for several uh, years now. And uh, as you probably yourself know as well, it takes a lot of time and effort uh, to set up a newsletter, to run a newsletter, to create your own charts, which I do myself, uh, and to write your thoughts on a weekly or a monthly basis. Um, and, I believe that the newsletter will offer something very different uh, that majority of other newsletters don't do. It will be focused on a global macro aspect with a, a disclosure or positioning that I take in real time uh, in majority of the asset classes uh, from gold uh, and silver to commodities, uh, various currencies, uh, stocks and bonds. 